In general game playing, a player may choose to make assumptions about the actions of the other players or not. For example, a player might assume that the other players are behaving rationally. By limiting irrational actions on the part of other players, a player can decrease the number of possibilities it needs to consider. Unfortunately, in general game playing, at least as currently constituted, no player knows the identity of the other players or their characteristics. The other players might be irrational, or they might behave the same as the player itself. Players might even be down, not functioning correctly. Since there's no information about the other players, many general game players take a pessimistic approach. They assume that the other players will perform the worst possible actions. This pessimistic approach is the basis for a game playing technique called Minimax. The basic idea of Minimax is to select moves that are guaranteed to produce the highest possible return no matter what the opponents do. The player tries to maximize its own value and assumes that the opponents are trying to minimize its value, hence the name Minimax. In the case of a one-step game, Minimax chooses an action such that the value of the resulting state for any opponent is greater than or equal to the value of the resulting state for any other action. In the case of a multi-step game, Minimax goes to the end of the game and backs up values. Generally, we can think about Minimax as search on a bipartite tree consisting of alternating max nodes, shown here as gray squares, and min nodes, shown here as beige circles. The max nodes represent the choices of the player, while the min nodes represent the choices of the other players. Uh, now, in the case of games with more than two players, it can be multiple layers of min nodes between each layer of max nodes, one layer for each opponent. Uh, now, also, in looking at this tree, note that although we've separated the choices of the player and its opponents, this does not mean that the play alternates between the opponents or that the opponents know the player's action. Player and opponents make their choices and then simultaneously with knowledge of each other's and simultaneously without the knowledge of each other's choices. Okay, the value of a max node for a player is the utility, the goal, the value, the reward of the corresponding state if that state is terminal. Otherwise, it's the maximum of the values of the min nodes that result from its legal actions. The value of a min node is the minimum that results for any legal opponent action. Let's see how this works. The following game tree illustrates it. The nodes at the bottom of the tree are terminal states, and the values of the player's goal values for those states. The values shown in the other nodes are computed according to the rules we just went over. For example, the value of the min node at the lower left is 1, because that's the minimum of the two values of the max nodes below it, namely 1 and 2. The value of the min node next to that min node is 3, because that's the minimum of the value of the values of the two max nodes below it, namely 3 and 4. The value of the max node above these two min nodes is 3, because that's the maximum of the values of the two min nodes, and so forth. Here's an implementation of a minimax player. It's identical to the implementations of a compulsive deliberation for single player games, except that it has a different best move procedure. The main difference between the best move subroutine for single player games and the best move for multiple player games is the way the scores are computed. Rather than comparing subsequent states, it compares the min nodes as described previously. The min score subroutine for Minimax takes an action and a state as arguments and produces the minimum values for the given role associated with the given player for any of the opponent's legal actions in the given state. The max score subroutine, which is called by min score, takes a state as argument and conducts a recursive exploration of the game tree below that state. If the state's terminal, the output is just the role uh, reward for that state. Otherwise, the output is the maximum of the utilities of the min nodes corresponding to the player's legal actions in the given state. Now, one disadvantage of the minimax procedure is that it examines the entire game tree in all cases. While this is sometimes necessary, there are cases where it's possible to get the same result without examining the entire game tree. For example, uh, if in processing a state, the max score subroutine finds an action that produces 100 points, it doesn't need to look at any additional actions since it cannot do better. Similarly, if the min score subroutine finds an action that produces 0 points for the player, it does not need to look at any additional actions since it cannot get the score any lower. 
Bounded minimax is just the minimax procedure we just saw with two minor changes. Rather than processing all actions on every node, max score and min score first check for these bounds. And if they occur on any node, they terminate their search and return the corresponding values. So here's an example. The nodes in this tree um, are, are those examined by bounded minimax. The ones that have numbers on them are examined by bounded minimax. The other nodes are not examined at all, and they don't need to be examined. In this case, notice that more than half of the tree is pruned from consideration. Note that 100 and 0 are not the only values that can be used here. For example, if a player is in a so-called satisficing game where it just needs to get a certain minimum score, then it can use that threshold rather than 100. For example, if a player simply wants to win and it's a fixed sum game, then it can use 51 as the threshold, knowing that if it gets this amount, it has won the game. 